Hello everyone. Uh, this time around, I want to talk a little bit about traffic congestion. Now this happens anywhere where you've got too many cars for the capacity of a road, um, or too many packets for the capacity of a, an internet link or whatever. The, 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 the mechanics behind it are basically the same. You've got too much trying to go through too small a space. Now, this is a particularly big problem in big cities, like Calgary, for instance, has traffic congestion. Uh, it, and you know, I don't see that there's any particular way to avoid that. And in fact, I, am, I have mostly come around to the point of view that traffic congestion is a good thing. Um, and that sounds counterintuitive, but the reasoning behind it is it keeps people off the road. If you keep the road capacity relatively small compared to the demand for transportation infrastructure, then you dramatically increase the opportunity cost of driving. And this is what we need to do to keep traffic under control. We can't just keep expanding the space allotted for automobiles. Eventually, we hit a point where the diminishing returns kick in, and no matter how much space we add, we can't, imp we can't improve traffic capacity, real capacity, because the traffic has destinations it's trying to get to. And at some point, you're going to get to a point where you can't improve the capacity of the destinations and uh, you're going to end up with real limits on what you can expand anyway. So uh, obviously we need some other solution than bigger roads and uh, this is why I've come around to the conclusion that traffic congestion is actually a good thing at least currently. It's certainly bad from an air quality standpoint and a whole bunch of other things like that, but would it be better to have even more cars on the road? Uh, and if we expand the road and it still can't handle the traffic, now we've got more cars sitting in congestion and idling. So, you know, just expanding the congestion capacity is not going to uh, give us a substantially better outcome on any front, whether it's moving traffic or environmental or what. So instead, we need to be looking at alternatives to classic transportation. Uh, you know, by, by classic transportation, I mean private personal transportation, uh, and the stuff that North America has, has tended to develop around, especially in the West, uh, you know, on the plains and so on, where there hasn't been a lot of, um, uh, well, uh, real estate restriction on uh, expanding everything. So, uh, so what is the solution? Well, there's been a lot of uh, uh, clever uh, so solutions proposed. Uh, a lot of them look the same. Uh, a, a big thing is, uh, well, uh, we need to solve the problem. Everybody wanting to start from a different place and going to a different place. So uh, that's a large reason we have a lot of the congestion we have now because public transportation networks aren't quite convenient enough in a lot of cases. Uh, the frequency of the buses on the uh, feeder routes is too low, or the bus stops are too far from the destination, or what have you. So there's been some suggestions to improve that. Now obviously, the, a good public transit network will be uh, quite beneficial. It will help. Like in Calgary, there are the public transit network is actually pretty good. And if I didn't have a car, uh, I, and I didn't have a job where I might need to get somewhere quickly, uh, I wouldn't need to own a car. I could live happily in the suburb I live in. Well, it's not really a suburb because it's in the city, but in the uh, outlying neighborhood that I live in, I could get by with just the public transit and the occasional taxi ride. That's how good the transportation actually is. Um, and my actual locale is a mile or so from a major uh, commercial center, uh, you know, supermarkets and all of that. So the stuff I need for day-to-day -day life, I can actually walk to. Uh, and, and this is the type of thing that's definitely how we need to go in the future. We need to be, instead of sprawling with endless residential only neighborhoods with the odd convenience store, we need to be 
uh, basically building satellite towns within the, the major urban areas. Uh, and in areas like Calgary, that doesn't happen naturally because there aren't dozens of little towns uh, on the outskirts, uh, you know, just outside the city limit that already have commercial cores. So because of that, Calgary would, without deliberate planning, would expand as a uh, basically a, an infinite residential sprawl with a massive traffic problem to get to a commercial core. Uh, but instead, we're zoning for things and putting commercial stuff in the new areas on the edge as if there was a town there in the first place. That's certainly helpful. But there's been some, some uh, proposals that would uh, potentially help uh, with uh, through traffic, say, uh, like building a freeway network underground. Uh, that's not a new idea, but... Most recently, Elon Musk and his boring company have been in the news with a notion like that, where they build a tunnel network, a uh, freeway tunnel network under, say, under Los Angeles. And uh, if you're going to partake of the network, you drive onto a platform. Presumably, you put your exit point or your destination. And the platform whisks you away into the tunnels, and you don't have to drive in the tunnel. This is what I understand the, uh, the solution actually is. Then you can kind of skip the surface uh, traffic. Now, I don't see how this is really going to solve anything because it's really the same situation that we've already got with freeways that are overloaded. We're just building more capacity and in an automated way. Now, I'll probably be able to handle more traffic per uh, space because it would be automated, but and would have a central control system. So it could m manage the where these uh, trolleys or whatever are going more effectively, and these trolleys could be electric and all of that, and it, it, could, it could work to some extent, I'm sure. But it's not going to solve the congestion problem because uh, the, the same thing that causes an expanded road on the surface to instantly fill up, those same mechanics are still at play here. And it reduces, say, the opportunity cost of getting out on the roads or something. Well, yeah, that means more people are going to get out on the roads, and it's not really going to improve things. So you're going to end up in a uh, in, in the same uh, never-ending arms race of increasing capacity. And now might, maybe you've got to make a second layer of tunnels to skip the congestion in the first layer, and next thing you know, you've... Uh, now you've got a three-dimensional traffic nightmare instead of a two-dimensional one. Uh, but it's, I don't think it's going to end up helping all that much. Although, somewhere like Los Angeles, which uh, has a huge traffic problem already, may actually benefit some from this type of situation because it doesn't have the real estate to build new roads at all. Um, and maybe you could uh, reserve a certain amount of capacity in this uh, freeway network for an arterial uh, transit network as well and maybe help the uh, traffic that way. But, you know, there's been ideas like that. And then there's been ideas like uh, you order up a uh, capsule uh, that comes to your house or a nearby uh, depot that you can walk to in a few minutes. And uh, you get in, you enter your destination, it negotiates with the overall uh, transportation network, and it uh, merges into the uh, transit lines, uh, maybe merges with a string of capsules going down a particular line, and then when you get to your di divergent point, you separate and go off on in your direction, maybe merge with another one. You know, that idea... Well, it sounds like a great idea, but it has all of the same problems of figuring out routing and everything that uh, every other method has. And now you, you have to have the, basically these capsules have to be able to somehow drive themselves. And that's a problem that we haven't solved yet. Uh, because it, not only does it have to handle 
the normal conditions on the network it's traveling on, whether that's a separate, uh, you know, uh, overhead monorail or something like that, or the actual surface streets existing street network, it also has to be able to handle extraordinary circumstances like obstructions and so on, or a broken down capsule or things like that. So, uh, and I'm not sure that these types of networks are ne necessarily any better than our existing road networks, uh, especially if we crack self-driving cars, which we will do. Uh, if we crack autonomous uh, automobiles, uh, so they can drive around, you give them a destination, they can find their way there. Well, if we crack that, then we basically have these personal capsule network things already happening on the existing infrastructure. So uh, it seems to me that a lot of these solutions that are proposed, they look great on paper. But when you start drilling down into the details of actually implementing it, you start finding that there's a lot of stuff that doesn't quite work or may not work as well as, as uh, might be hoped. Now, uh, you know, and there have been experiments on some of these types of things, and they have somewhat worked, uh, some of them. Uh, and some of them, they didn't really work because the experiments were too small of a scale to show any benefit, you know. But a lot of the, one of the big things a lot of these proposed solutions have is a massive price tag. They're going to cost a huge amount to implement, and the gains aren't proven. The benefits aren't shown. And this is, this is the problem. And on top of it, we'd have to retrofit these things into an existing overcrowded urban landscape. And that, on its own, is a problem. So a lot of these solutions, and that probably includes the Boring Company's uh, tunnel network, they may turn out to be beneficial, they may turn out to work, but is the cost going to be worth the end benefit? Now, I wish the Boring Company all all the best in their endeavor uh, that you know that at least it proves out that it works, and at the very least, if they come out of it with the, the skill at boring tunnels, maybe they can actually do that. Uh, uh, you know, for uh, other purposes, uh, if not for their own use, you know. Uh, at the very least, they're going to learn how to bore tunnels, and that's useful expertise, I'm sure. So there you have that. Uh, you, know, you know, it's uh, whether their freeway network underground pans out, well, maybe the tunnels will be useful for something else. Yeah, maybe running utilities, I don't know. Um, but we'll see. Maybe Mr. Musk and his uh, boring company will demonstrate something, uh, will show a benefit that is not obvious. Uh, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll turn out to be right and this thing will actually work. Um, hey, that would be great, actually, if it turns out to work. Uh, there could be benefits to underground uh, freeways and so on outside of the Los Angeles area uh, if they can figure out how to do it cost effectively and make this whole thing work. Uh, it could certainly be beneficial in colder climates uh, where you could have the freeway not being filled with snow, uh, you know, things like that. So, yeah, you know, maybe there's some benefits there that, that aren't immediately uh, apparent, uh, or maybe that will turn out to be useful, even if it doesn't solve its intended problem of skipping the traffic, and it just turns out to be another congestion point, which is what I think it's going to do. Anyway, um, I think really, I've kind of got off on a tangent on a tangent here, I think, but anyway, the basic point here is that congestion is not going away. I don't see any way it can go away until such time as the human population in any given area stops increasing and we come up with a transportation system that fits the needs of that population. 
And even then, there will be at least some localized congestion, either spatially or temporally. Uh, and that we'll never be able to get away from. So like a major sporting event is always going to attract some sort of congestion, whether it's foot traffic or vehicle traffic or something. There's always going to be congestion in at points where a lot of people converge all at once. That I don't think we'll ever be able to avoid. But maybe, maybe we can come up with a way to avoid systemic congestion once we figure out how to solve the population growth problem. Maybe. But I think that's the only way we can eliminate the congestion is to have fixed populations and reduce the need for travel. Uh, if we can do that, I think we'll have, uh, we'll have a much better world and the congestion will take care of itself. But until then, I don't see it happening. And until then, I actually believe that the congestion is a good thing because it's reducing the number of people that are getting into that congestion situation it's just because of the opportunity cost of the congestion. And meanwhile, we should be working on things like urban planning and so on that reduce the need for travel and, and all of that. And it, it seems like at least some areas, some cities, have got the memo on that. Uh, maybe they're not doing the best job, but they're trying. And I think this is going to be beneficial long term. Now, I, for one, will be very interested to see what the city of Calgary looks like in 20 or 30 years. Um, and if, if I happen to live that long in 50 or 60 years, I'd love to see what the city looks like. Because I, I'd like to see what the outcome of the current planning will be. Um, now, I don't have any illusions that I'm going to make it 60 more years that put me at the century mark, that's fairly unlikely. People don't generally live that long. Um, but 30 years, yeah, good chance of that. 40 years, reasonable chance of that. But not 60, you know. So I'm not going to see the end result 60 years out. Well, it's not going to be but the result 60 years out. But I'm really looking forward to seeing things as they evolve. Because I think that's going to show us quite a lot uh, it's going to show some substantial improvements over time. And there will be a point when the policies will hit a breakover point and we'll see a marked shift in the, uh, in the, the paradigms operating in the city, uh, a, a, a market shift away from the automobile and toward the public transportation and walking and that sort of thing. And that would be really nice to see. As the city will be quieter, it'll be cleaner, uh, and there will be less congestion, obviously. Uh, because I tell you, congested foot traffic, a lot easier to deal with than congested, congested automobile traffic. So there you go. Uh, the next half a century, I think, is going to be the proving ground for a lot of this. And I think we will even ultimately uh, get things largely figured out. And, uh, you know, eventually uh, things will settle out. Uh, that's assuming humanity is still around. Uh, that is in question, but, you know, we're relatively smart. We'll probably figure out how to stick around and not destroy ourselves. But all it takes is a few wing nuts with buttons. But, you know, we can't worry about that. We need to plan. And it looks like, at least in some areas, the planning is happening. And I'm actually quite pleased to see that. Uh, anyway, uh, that's probably enough of a ramble on this topic for today. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, it's a fairly big topic. Uh, I'm sure if I did some research, I could probably go on for hours. Um, anyway... Uh, that's all for now. If you, uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications with that uh, silly bell thing. Uh, if you liked the video, or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike, whichever you see fit. I, it won't hurt my feelings either way. 
And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.